Calling All Authors, the Your Book, Your Voice podcast with host Robert A. Lane features everything you need to know about narrating your audio book, but it doesn't stop there. We have special guests lined up from all aspects of the book publishing industry, and we also dive deep into what it takes to be mentally prepared for success as an author and in life. So please welcome your host, Robert A. Lane. All right. Hello. Welcome, my friends, to the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. Thank you so much for joining. I'm your host, Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching, and I am an audiobook coach and producer. I specialize in helping nonfiction authors who have a great published book that's out there in the world for people to read and help them turn that book by taking it into uh, up to the next level by narrating their own audiobook in their own voice. Because again, all nonfiction authors need to narrate their own book. Why? Because it's your story. No one can express it. No one can speak it. No one can tell your story better than you because you wrote it, you experienced it. Yeah, you've put your blood, sweat, and tears into the book that you've written and you've uh, got it published out there in the world. So you really are the person who is most qualified to narrate your own audiobook. So we're gonna talk about things to help you uh, do an awesome audiobook narration, even if you've never narrated an audiobook before. But that's uh, what I do with my coaching program, which is called Your Book, Your Voice. It is a six week program where I help authors, again, narrate their own audiobook. Uh, I provide the equipment for you, teach you how to do a great narration, and then get you published on the AAA, the AAA, Audible, Amazon, Apple. Those are the three main distribution platforms that you just absolutely have to be on because most of the general public go there to find their audiobooks. Now, there are other places that you can uh, uh, get your uh, audiobook uh, distributed, uh, but again, it all depends on what's working best for you as an author, your author brand, uh, what your marketing strategies are, and which are things that we talk about uh, in the audiobook coaching program to help you decide you know, whether you're exclusive or non-exclusive with Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books. Do you want to publish in other places? Uh, those types of things we do talk about in the program. I'll be talking uh, more in detail about the audiobook coaching program later on in the podcast, but I just want to get into our topic today. So uh, again, our topic is, I love my voice. Do you? Really? Do you really love your voice? We're going to dive into this because being confident and uh, embracing and loving your voice is a key factor to uh, doing a great audiobook narration. Uh, even the professionals uh, go through times where maybe they are doubting their ability on how to do a, a narration, or well, not really how, but maybe maybe they're having an off day. And those of you who maybe don't have that experience, confidence levels do drop. So uh, we got to build up that confidence. You got to love your voice. And uh, if you don't love your voice, you have to figure out what is the reason why. Why don't you love this awesome sound that's coming out of your body? It is awesome because that's part of your author brand. Uh, one thing to always keep in mind as a published nonfiction author, or even if you're in the process of writing your book, is that your voice is already in your written word. It's there on, on, on uh, the paper. It's there in your uh, hardcover, in your paperback, or in the digital version, your ebook. It's all there. Your voice is there, and that's what makes you so unique. And preserving your uniqueness, preserving the integrity of your author brand is so important because that's who you are. And that uniqueness is what makes uh, people attracted to your story, attracted to the book that you've written, especially if you're a coach or an entrepreneur, maybe you're a relationship coach or a life coach or maybe a career coach, nutritionist, a weight loss coach, whatever your specific genre is, um, people are attracted to your book because of your style of writing and the way you speak in your written word. So. It only makes sense for you as the author to narrate your own audiobook because it is already in your written word, okay? It's already there. 
it's already there. So here's something very interesting that I wanted to share with you. And if you want to um, mention anything in the comments, you can. Uh, and that is whether you like your voice or you don't like your voice. Just say like, don't like, uh, because there is a percentage. There is a percentage of people who um, have uh, liked their voice and not liked their voice. And I want to see where you fall in that percentage. Uh, so if you like your voice, by the way, you are in the 23% <laughs> of people who like their voice or people who um, are comfortable with their voice. Um, so that leaves 77%, 77% of the population who don't like their voice, or maybe they even say, oh, I hate my voice, or even if it's just, I'm just uncomfortable with how I sound. 77%, that's a pretty high percentage. So you need to uh, turn that around, right? We want to build that confidence. So what are some of the reasons? Like some people say, well, you know, I just, um, I just don't like the way I sound. I just don't want like the way it sounds to me. I mean, the way that I hear myself in my head and then when it plays back, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I don't know why it sounds that way. Uh, so, um, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, so, um, we're going to take a quick break, by the way. I know my camera, uh, froze <laughs> for some reason. Um, and I may switch over to a different camera. So let's, let's do that and see if we can get this uh, little technical glitch fixed. And then we'll dive into, uh, this great topic of loving your voice and embracing this wonderful sound that comes out of your body because you are a great narrator and you can be. So uh, we'll be right back. You're listening to the Your Book, Your Voice uh, podcast, and uh, we're going to fix this glitch and be right back. Don't go away. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Okay, welcome back. You know, nothing like technology. It happens. Glad you're here. Glad you're hanging out. This is the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. Uh, I'm Robert A. Lane, your host. We are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. I'm an audiobook co coach and producer. My business is called Robert Lane Coaching. Uh, you can go to robertlanecoaching.com uh, to check out uh, more information about what I do as an audiobook coach and producer. Uh, fingers crossed that the camera does not uh, freeze up again. <laughs> We'll see what happens. Hopefully not. Uh, but our topic again today is, I love my voice. Do you? Really? So that means 
do you really love your voice or are you just saying you do? Again, before we had uh, took this uh, uh, break, um, I did mention that 23% of the population likes their voice or feels comfortable with their voice, and but 77% don't, or they hate their voice or they're not comfortable with it. And we need to dive in and dig into the reasons why, you know. Um, again, some people aren't comfortable with how they sound. Some people, uh, maybe, maybe you feel like, oh, well, you know, I have an accent, you know, or, or a dialect. But you know what? That can actually work in your favor. You know, whether you have a West Coast accent or, or an East Coast accent or a Southern accent, or maybe you have an accent like, uh, like people from uh, Minnesota or Wisconsin or, or Canada uh, or, you know, the UK or just wherever you're from. Accents don't really matter in regards to your narration. And don't you think of that as a crutch? Don't think of that as a barrier or something that to hinder you from narrating your own audiobook. Don't let that because it actually adds to your character and it adds uh, to your uniqueness of who you are and what makes you, you. And that's what makes you so unique. And that's part of your author brand. Even in your written word, in your book, maybe somebody doesn't know whether you're from you know, uh, the deep south uh, or, or maybe from the UK or from a, another uh, country, uh, and maybe English isn't your first language, but you do have an accent. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because when you actually narrate your audiobook, again, it brings that uniqueness to life, which is, again, one of the reasons why, uh, you know, having a narrator narrate your audiobook, you get the best narrator in the world, and that's fine. But they're still doing their interpretation of your book. As a nonfiction author, you're the one who knows your story better than anybody. You know where to put the, uh, you know, uh, the words and phrases or paragraphs that you want to accent, where you want to uh, put the emotion into your uh, uh, narration, into the delivery that you're, that you're saying when you're telling your story. Another narrator may not know that. They may not pick up on that. So again, they're going to use their own interpretation when doing your audiobook. Now, that can be great for fiction because you have uh, voices and characters and all these other things that can bring your story to life. But as a nonfiction author, again, uh, especially if you are a coach or a teacher or an entrepreneur or, or even a poet, or, or maybe you write children's books, you really need to voice it. You really do, because that's part of your author brand, okay? Uh, maybe some people are worried about uh, maybe they, they, they don't like the tone of their voice. I don't like, well, I'm t my, my voice is too high pitched or, or maybe too low pitched or maybe, uh, you know, I sound nasal or grovelly or, you know, whatever. But hey, that's part of what makes you, you. And I, I'm telling you, again, for what I do as an audiobook coach and producer, I hear a lot of authors speaking in their own voice. And uh, you know what, 99% of them are fine. They have great voices, whether they have a little accent or it's it's higher pitched or lower pitched or whatever style. But you know what, that's again, that's what makes you, you, and that's what makes you unique. And preserving your uniqueness, preserving your uh, author brand, because that is your brand, uh, is very crucial because that's what people expect. You know, when they, uh, see, let's say you are you're your life coach and you've written a book and you've talked about, you know, how to uh, do certain things with your tools and techniques that you teach. People are attracted to you by the way you teach, by the way you express yourself. So preserving that author brand is really crucial. So when you narrate your own audiobook, they get to hear you teach. They get to hear you describe your book the way you want it to be heard, the way that you intend it to be heard. And that's really important. So you got to love your voice. So that in 77% of people, we got to turn that around, right? Some people feel like they, they don't project loud enough or they're, or they're too uh, timid with their voice. Uh, some people might even feel that, uh, you know, they, they're not comfortable with expressing emotion, you know, especially if you've written a, a, a memoir or, or an experience in your, in your book that's um, very personal. And maybe it does bring you down a path of, of emotion that, that can be hard to express. But these are things that you can overcome and learn techniques on how to be able to, to speak well 
And uh, oh, I see my camera just froze again. Um, I'm going to switch cameras real quick and see if this will solve the problem. Now, uh, I know the engineers on the other side, I know that this camera is darker. <laughs> I, so hopefully you can light that up a little bit and uh, hopefully it won't uh, freeze up. But uh, uh, sorry about the technical uh, issues that are happening. Um, anyway, um, vocal fatigue is another thing that some people are concerned about. So they don't want to they don't want to uh, do their own narration. They're like, ah, oh, my voice is going to feel tired and run down. But all these things, uh, you know, uh, energy, pacing, emotion, volume, uh, vocal fatigue, all these things, um, they are issues that can be resolved. And that's exactly what I do in my audiobook coaching program is helping you uh, learn tools and techniques to overcome all these things so you do sound great and you do sound like a professional, even if you've never done it before. So uh, there are solutions, okay? There are solutions. Um, yeah, you know, the picture doesn't look too bad. I appreciate you guys getting it a little bit brighter. Um, but um, thank you for that on the engineering side. Bull Brave TV, man, way to go. I appreciate that. <laughs> all right, uh, so that's good. Um, so, <laughs> okay, um, so a couple of things that I want to share with you. First of all, if you've never uh, thought about turning your published nonfiction book into an audiobook, you really do need to because the audiobook world is growing and expanding and has been over the last several years. Uh, and you need to be in that market. You really do. If you want to find out more information on, about the uh, program that I teach, I would love to speak with you. And uh, that's one simple step that you can do. And I, and I highly recommend that you book a call with me. And uh, I do have a link that you can um, grab. If you're watching the video portion of the podcast, it's there on the screen there. Check it out. Uh, it is a, a bit.ly link, which is bit.ly forward slash audiobook onboarding. Okay, so grab that link book a call with me. You will talk with me personally. And then this way we can talk about your book. We can uh, find out what your marketing goals are, what you want to do with your audiobook, how you want to promote it. Uh, and then I give you the, all the details about the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program. And then we get you enrolled. So just schedule a call. Love to talk with you and uh, hear about your book. Again, it's bit.ly forward slash audiobook onboarding. Okay, so that's one thing I want to share with you. The second thing that I want to share with you is a uh, freebie. I want to give you something just because you're awesome. You're an awesome, awesome author. I got to get this out, awesome author. And uh, I want to give you something that can help you with your audiobook narration. Okay, so here's another bit.ly link. This is a audiobook narration reference guide that I've put together that you can download for free. Uh, talks about the practical aspects of doing a great narration and also the um, uh, intangibles, right? The emotional aspects of doing a great narration. So grab that free guide. It's uh, the web uh, address to grab it is this. The link is bit.ly B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash narration reference guide. Okay, bit.ly forward slash narration reference guide. There you go. All right, and you can also grab that on my website as well. You can go to robertlanecoaching.com and grab the uh, the uh, reference guide off of the website as well, okay? So uh, again, I do want to talk about confidence because confidence is uh, something that I deal with with a lot of the uh, a lot of the clients that uh, that I work with who go through the audiobook coaching program. Uh, and uh, it's it's again, believing that they have the voice, right? I love my voice. You have to love your voice. So believing that that uh, you have the tools the, and you have the skill and you do have what it takes to do a great narration. You really do. So let's talk about some confidence uh, tools that you can utilize uh, to build that confidence, to embrace and love your voice. You have to love your voice to do a great audiobook narration. You really do. Um, you know, and some people think, and I've seen this too. I've talked with some authors, like, yeah, you know, uh, it's a piece of cake. Let me let me grab grab my book, and then and then. But when they start to do it, they realize, you know what? Maybe it's a it's a little bit tougher than I thought it was going to be. It's not sounding the way I want it to sound, and I don't know why. And this is why 
Uh, I created the program that I do to teach uh, authors how to do a, a great narration uh, to give you the tools that you need. But let's talk about a couple of things just to build confidence, all right? Um, one thing is really taking a moment just to think about um, what is it? What is the reason behind not liking your voice? If you don't love your voice, if you don't appreciate and embrace the sound that you have that makes you so unique, what is the reason why? What is creating that barrier? Think about that. You know, maybe it's, uh, uh, is it is it fear-based? Is it fear? Is it fear of public speaking? Is it fear of, of sticking a microphone in front of your face? Some people have have a fear of that. And, you know, it's it's valid. It's valid, but you can change your perception. You can change that belief. If you believe that you are not able to narrate because of a fear, we need to identify what that fear is. And then once you can identify it, then you can embrace that fear, move it aside, and start replacing those fears and those beliefs with something positive, okay? And that's uh, something that uh, I do with my clients. I have them make a list of uh, 10 affirmations, 10 positive affirmations about themselves and especially about their voice and about their uh, narration abilities. So it could be something as simple as, I love my voice, right? I love my voice. Or, you know, I have a great voice. I am a great narrator. My book is awesome. I'm an awesome nonfiction author. So my audiobook is going to be just as awesome as my as my written book. Uh, you know, I love my voice. I embrace my voice. I love how I sound. I am completely confident in how I sound. Whatever the affirmations are, you can go through a whole list of things. But uh, do that. Write it down. Okay, write down these affirmations because it will help you do a, a much better audiobook narration. A matter of fact, when you have the confidence and you believe in yourself and you're saying these affirmations, that will raise your energy level, that will raise uh, the emotion that you want to express uh, in your narration. And those intangibles are what separates an uh, average audiobook to one that's just just fantastic. And you want to be fantastic when you do your audiobook narration, okay? So embrace the voice, all right? Do your affirmations. Write them out. Print them out. And, you know, tape them in your office. Put them up by your computer. Stick it on your bathroom mirror. Put it on your refrigerator and read them over, okay? Read them when you wake up in the morning. Read them when you go to bed. But the trick or I should say the key factor is, it's not really a trick, <laughs> because if you do it, you will be successful. Uh, the key factor is you need to say these affirmations to yourself, but don't just say them. You gotta say them until you feel them. And when you feel them, then you believe them. And when you believe them, then your subconscious will believe you that you really do believe that you have a great voice, that you are a great narrator, that you can narrate your own audiobook. And when your subconscious believes it, then you are on the right track, you are in the right frame of mind, and now you're ready to hit that record button and start doing your audiobook narration. So when you read those affirmations, do it until you feel it, right? Read them till you feel it, feel it till you believe it. Once you believe it, your confidence will go up and then you're ready to go, okay? So writing on affirmations is a great thing. Another thing that I do, one of the first things that I do with my uh, clients, uh, is a meditation. You can call it a meditation. It, it's more of a, um, a visual visualization uh, and uh, relaxation exercise because you need to, again, put yourself in the right frame of mind before you ever hit that record button. So uh, we do a thing where uh, an exercise where uh, I help you get grounded, get focused, you have to be in the present moment. You can't uh, be thinking about anything else, like worrying about anything that's happened in the past, worrying about anything that, that you have to do in the future. You really have to be in the present moment. And we do an exercise to 
get you focused and to get you there. Breathing exercises and a visualization exercise. You know, uh, putting yourself in the right frame of mind by visualizing yourself in your happy place. What is your happy place? You know, where is a place where you feel relaxed, where you feel joy, where you feel uh, contentment? Maybe you also feel confident, empowered. Those are the emotions that you want to feel. And uh, visualizing a place that brings those emotions to the surface is where you want to be. And then putting them into the present moment, getting yourself really focused and grounded. Now you're ready to go. That's how you start to build that confidence because you're moving aside any of that negativity. We don't want that negativity. We want positivity. So we're moving that aside and we're bringing in positivity by getting ourselves grounded, focused, bringing those emotions in. And uh, then you're ready to go because now you're in the right frame of mind. That's really, really important. So you have to embrace your uniqueness. All right. Again, Another narrator can't do what you do. You've done it already. Your voice is already in your written word. They can't replicate that. They cannot replicate you. And again, you know, uh, I was on a, a podcast not too long ago, and uh, one of the questions that uh, uh, was asked was, how do you feel about using AI as a narrator. And, you know, of course, <laughs> the one thing I say is AI, you mean AI, yeah, yeah, no, no way, no way. AI is not going to cut it. Number one, AI is not even a real voice, okay? I don't care how uh, realistic that uh, they may make it, it's not real. But the most important thing is, with, especially with you as an author and your author brand, it's not you. No one can replicate you. And AI definitely can't do it. So don't fall for that, you know, easy way out. You know, it's, it's, it's cutting corners. You don't want to cut corners. You can't cut corners with your author brand. You've worked too hard to create this awesome book that you've published. Don't cut corners by having, you know, oh, I'll just run it through an AI program and they'll do my narration because they're going to get... There's going to be mispronunciations. It's, it's not going to sound the way that you would speak. And I'll tell you, it's a turnoff, especially nowadays. Like, you know, you go to YouTube and you're watching videos. You can tell what's real and what's not. And, you know, those videos that just have AI narration, next. No, I don't want to watch. I don't want to hear that. And especially with you being a nonfiction author, no one, again, no one can tell your story the way you can. No one. That's your unique voice and your unique style. And that's, again, what builds and presents your author brand. You got to preserve that. You got to preserve that. Okay. It is so important. Don't do AI. It's, it's not, it's, it can't represent you. You know, just like, just like w with another narrator, no matter how great they are, it's still their interpretation. You know, especially if you are a coach or a teacher or you have a how-to book, you know, that's that's your teaching style, all right? That's what you have to preserve is your teaching style. You don't want someone else trying to interpret how you teach. That doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense at all. Or if you have a story that you've told or an experience that you've gone through, you know, especially if it's a, a memoir about maybe maybe growing up in a toxic family uh, you know, with, with uh, you know, uh, an alcoholic mother or father or, you know, whatever the story is and that you had to overcome adversity. How is another narrator going to be able to interpret that? Because they didn't experience it the way you did. And AI definitely isn't. And AI is not going to represent you. The other thing about AI that I really want to you know, hit home about is, you know, you're, you're cheapening your author brand and you don't want to do that. You've worked too hard to create the book or books that you've written, or maybe you're in the process of writing, you don't want to cheapen that. Because when you write your book, right, you're not cutting corners. Maybe you, maybe you have a, a, a book coach, and you should. When I wrote my book, I have a book here called Lights Action You. This is, uh, this is the book that I've written. Um, when I started writing this book, you know, I wanted to make sure that I did it right and that uh, I had the, uh, the proper coaching and guidance. 
So I hired a book coach and it was the best decision that I've ever made. Well worth the investment, well worth it. Because uh, without that guidance, I wouldn't have been able to write this book and at least get it done in the time frame that I wanted to get it written. So, you know, it's, it's important to have a support system and a team to help you. So maybe you hired a book coach, but I'm sure that, that you've had proofreaders and uh, editors, formatters, cover designers, all those people who are professionals in that, their specific niche to help you create a great book. You don't cut corners there. So don't cut corners with your audiobook narration. We're going to talk more about this when we uh, come back. We're taking a quick break. This is the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. I'm your host, Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. You can check out what I do as an audiobook coach and producer at robertlanecoaching.com. We are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. I appreciate you hanging out. Uh, more coming up next. Don't go away. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like... I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, Hope, and Support for Caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. And welcome back. This is the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Um, again, I'm an audio book coach and producer, so I specialize in helping nonfiction authors turn their awesome book into an audio book that they narrate themselves, as you should. All nonfiction authors need to narrate their own audio book. That's what I'm saying, and I'm sticking to it, and you should too. Um, we are streaming live, by the way, on the Bold Brave TV network, uh, and uh, we're talking about loving your voice. I love my voice. Do you? Really? That's the title of our podcast. And we've talked about things about uh, how to identify maybe the barriers that are keeping you from narrating your own audiobook, and also um, things that you can do to build confidence in your voice. Uh, the emotional aspect of doing a narration, the energetic aspect of doing an audiobook narration is crucial, is crucial. And to tap into that energy and that emotion, you have to be comfortable, you have to be relaxed, you have to be conversational, and you especially have to be authentic. And to be able to do that and having that self-confidence in your voice is the key. You got to love your voice. You got to be confident with your voice so that you're not hesitant with your delivery. And uh, it, it does make all the difference in the world. You do have to build up that confidence. You also have to, of course, have the practical aspects of doing a great audiobook narration. Uh, so let's, let's just touch on some of that. Um, some of the things that you need to do that can really help you is simple things, right? Practice. Practice practice. Practicing is a great thing. We all do it. 
musicians practice, no matter what their instrument is, singers practice, you know, even, even artists, you know, they'll draw and, and practice their art. You are an author, right? When you wrote your drafts, you had, I'm sure you had, you know, a first draft, second draft, third draft, you know, however many times you've gone back and tweaked and, and revised your, your book. It's, it's a form of practice in a sense, right? You're writing it and you're refining. Same thing when you're doing a, an audiobook narration. When you're narrating, just practice because you, you're, again, refining and uh, all those other things that we talked about, about confidence building and all those things, being conversational and authentic. When you practice, you get to practice these things. So it's really good just to grab your book and, and read. Read it as if you're doing your narration. And re again, record yourself and play it back. Now, if you're like, oh, I don't want to listen to myself. I don't want to record myself and listen to myself when I play it back. Then now you, you're in that 77% of people who don't like their voice. Well, we got to step back, right? You got to step back and you need to, 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 again, embrace and love your voice first. You got to love it first. Do those affirmations. Do the visualization. Put yourself in your happy place. Get yourself in the right frame of mind. And then practice, okay? Because now with you being grounded and focused, now you can practice and do it right, right? It's not, you got to practice properly, all right? And the way you practice properly is believing in your voice and believing how you sound. That's, that's, that's the key factor, all right? So, but again, record yourself, play it back, listen, all right? Take, take a chapter and just record yourself. How is your energy level? And then listen to other things, right? You want to listen to the practical aspects as well. How close and far away are from are, are you know? Am I from my microphone? Am I too far away? Am I too close? Am I popping the mic? You know, with with, with plosives. And plosives are those consonants that that uh, you know pop a microphone, like P, B, K. You know, hard C. Uh, even uh, some uh, people when they say G, G. Uh, may pop the mic. So those are things that you can listen for. And when you record and you play it back, you can really, really listen and just kind of dissect it a little bit. What's going on in the ambience? Are you hearing other things in the recording? Is, uh, is the fan in your computer getting into your microphone? Can you hear it? Can you hear other people talking? Can you hear a plane flying by? Can you hear, you know, things happening outside? Can you hear people, maybe you're recording in your home office or in your bedroom, uh, and you're hearing other people in the house uh, making noise? Is that getting into your recording? Those are things that you want to listen to, and that will help you, again, uh, refine your narration. Okay, You want to listen to it and, and listen to those things. Another thing that you want to focus on is, is mouth noise. Are you making a lot of sounds, uh, anomalies with, with your, your lips, your mouth, uh, your tongue? Uh, you know, we all talk, uh, human beings talk the way we talk, and some people uh, have more mouth noise than others, you know? But just be aware of it, because awareness is the other key factor. You know, again, being aware of these things, okay? And if you're hearing excessive mouth noise, maybe there's something that you can do. If you're smacking your lips you know, too much, if you're talking, you know, maybe you're, you're doing something like, uh, the next day at work, I was talking to a coworker, you know, yeah. you don't want to do that, okay? So just, again, when you record and you play it back, you'll discover things that you didn't even realize you were doing. And it's just, it's good practice to listen back and go, oh, wow, I didn't realize I, I was doing that. Okay, now that I'm more conscious about that, uh, I can work on my delivery. I can express myself still with the same emotion, still with the same energy, but maybe with less mouth noise. Okay, so that's why it's really important to listen and, uh, you know, record and listen back. Great, great technique, okay, and practice. Definitely practice. You want to warm yourself up before you dive in. Another uh, uh, technique that I uh, have my clients do is uh, 
again, think about who are you talking to? And I don't mean your genre. I don't mean the, your market. You know, I mean very, very, very specific. Who are you talking to? Have somebody very specific in mind. Is it, uh, is it uh, your best friend? Maybe it's your husband or wife or significant other, or maybe it's a coworker. Maybe it's another family member. Somebody that you really feel comfortable with. Somebody that if you sat down and you're at a coffee house and you're like, man, you know, let's say you, you know, this is your book and you're, and you're, you're like, I, I wanna tell you this story. Who can you tell your story to that makes you just really comfortable and relaxed to, to express it? Have somebody very specific in mind because that does make all the difference in the world. Because you're talking to somebody and you're very conversational and you're comfortable. When you're setting up your recording space, by the way, uh, you, you have to make sure that it's a comfortable space. You know, aside from, yes, it needs to be quiet and you don't want distractions, but you do have to be comfortable because when you're comfortable, you'll be more conversational and you will be more conversational when you have somebody very specific in mind. And when you have that person who that you're telling your story to, while you're doing your narration, that brings out your authenticity because you don't wanna fake it. You don't fake it till you make it. You don't, uh, you're not a poser. You are who you are. You're you, you're unique. That's what you're bringing to the table when you do your narration. Because you're, again, your uniqueness is already in your written word. You've got this great book that you've published. You have this great story that, you've, that you're told. Now you're just telling it for real. And I tell you, I prefer, and I know a lot of people prefer to hear, especially nonfiction authors, tell their story. Let them tell their story because I wanna hear them. Again, no one can tell your story the way you can because you lived it. It's your story. It's your story. And my book, by the way, uh, just to tell you a little bit about the book that I've written called Lights, Action, You, you can get it, get it on Amazon. Amazon, Apple, Audible, you better believe it, the AAA, it's there. Uh, when I wrote this book, I, I, um, I was doing more of the career coaching and life coaching aspect before I now focused uh, myself as an audiobook coach. But uh, but what I've done, uh, because my experience before becoming a coach was uh, working in the entertainment business for 30 plus years, and uh, I've taken some of those stories and experiences and put them in this book, but with each story is a tool or technique or a lesson uh, that I want to share with you and teach you that you can take with you and apply it to your life to help you navigate not only through uh, any type of work environment, but also just in life in general. Okay, so uh, with these stories, there's tools and techniques to help you. Um, but the reason why I bring this up is uh, a couple of things that came to mind. There's a, there's a couple of chapters in here. One does deal with fear. And again, if you don't love your voice and if fear is a reason why an aspect of it, maybe it was a bad experience that you had, maybe it is fear of public speaking or talking in a microphone that's contributing to you not liking your voice, you know, there is a chapter in this book that does talk about uh, dealing with fear. And uh, there's a catchphrase that I use in the book, which I'll share with you, which is face it, embrace it, purge it, replace it. It's a catchphrase that I uh, talk about in the book and also uh, uh, teach uh, my clients about it as well. When it comes to dealing with fear, you face your fear, you embrace it, you purge it, meaning you move it aside and you replace it with positive affirmations, like I mentioned earlier positive affirmations about your voice, about your authorship, about your brand. Because again, even as an author, imposter syndrome comes in. I, you know, can I really write this book? Is my book really good enough? Same with narration. Is my voice really good enough? I mean, there are, there are actors, and I know this working in the business, in the entertainment business, there are some you know, high level actors who still go through uh, confidence issues, all right? There are some major actors who, who feel like imposters sometimes. You know, does, am I really, can I really do this? Am I really this good? You know, or I'm trying to be this good? And it's, again, it's, it's your belief systems. It happens, you know, these, some of these people go through that 
So it's understandable that, you know, no matter whether you're a famous actor, or you're not a famous actor, or, you know, a famous author or not a famous author, we all go through the same feeling. So being able to overcome those, you have to work at it. You have to purge the negative and bring in the positive. All right. We'll talk more about this in just a bit. I also want to share with you some more details about the uh, Your Book, Your Voice audio coaching program and how that works and how you can get involved and get your audiobook published in six weeks, okay? Six weeks you can narrate, record, and be published on Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books. We'll talk more about that when we come back. This is the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. We are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. We'll be Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to EasySense.com and learn how, with your help, we can fight these horrific brain disorders. That's EasySense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation. And welcome back to the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. We are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. Again, our topic is, I love my voice. Do you really? That's the title of our topic today. And we've been talking about how to build confidence in your voice because every nonfiction author needs to narrate their own audiobook, period. Your book, your story, you're the one most qualified to do it. And it all starts with loving your voice, believing in your voice, embracing this wonderful sound that's coming out of your body, uh, this resonator, your head is a resonator that creates the unique tone that uh, people hear. So love it and embrace it. Don't worry about, uh, you know, oh, I have an accent. Oh, I sound too high pitch, low pitch, whatever. I'm telling you, 99% of the authors that I've worked with and that I know need to, you know, they sound fine. They sound fine. Matter of fact, I, I should say 100% because every author that I've worked with in the audiobook coaching program has gone through it and has done an awesome job uh, with their uh, audiobook. And you can too. So I do want to talk a little bit about the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program, which is what I do. And, uh, uh, I love doing it because I get to do two things that I really enjoy. One is coaching. I love helping people and I love helping authors like yourself uh, with your awesome nonfiction book and turning that into something that's just incredible with your own voice. So I love doing that. Uh, again, working in the entertainment business, uh, I've also been an audio editor uh, with my own business on the side that I was doing while I was doing the entertainment uh, world thing. Uh, I have done audio post-production, so I get to do that as well. And this is how it all ties together. Because when you do your audiobook, when you're recording your audiobook, it is divided up into sections. You know, you do each part of your book as one audio file. Once you record all your audio files, you need to send that to an editor. That editor has to make sure that your files sound clean, 
uh, but most importantly, that they meet the exact specifications for publication into Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books, because you don't want to do all that work, and then it gets rejected. And I've seen that happen. And it's, it's, it's soul crushing, right? When you do all that work, yeah, it's like, ah, oh, my book got rejected by Audible. That should never happen. And if you're in my program, it won't happen. You're guaranteed 100% to be published, hands down. All right. So the way the program works is this. Action takers are success makers, my other catchphrase. And what that means is you need to book a call with me. That's the first step because I want to talk about your book. I want to find out what your goals are and then also get an idea of uh, where we need to go in regards to uh, going through the, the uh, audiobook coaching program. All right. So book your call. All right. Um, all you have to do is uh, grab the uh, booking link. We just put it up on the screen. If you're seeing the uh, video portion, it is a bit.ly link, bit.ly forward slash audiobook onboarding. Okay. Book your call. You can go to robertlanecoaching.com as well to grab that link. Uh, as, there's plenty of uh, buttons to you know book your call. All right. So that's the first step. So let me go through the three basic pillars of the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program. Okay. First pillar is this: setup and preparation. All right. You're recording your own audiobook. So to help you with that, and once you enroll into the program, I send you the professional recording equipment that you need. So microphone, and I mean a pro microphone, pro headphones. We go over the recording program that you're gonna to use to record your audiobook. Everything is laid out for you step-by-step, step, okay? Um, there are video lessons that you have that you watch. There are PDF downloads in the program that you can grab as reference material. And we do meet every week uh, you and I will work together throughout the entire process. So it's not like watch the videos and do it on your own. No, we do it with you. I'm there with you every step of the way. As your coach, as your support system, as your accountability partner, everything to help keep you on track, okay? So set up in preparation. So I teach you how to set up your own recording space. And the beauty about having your own recording space is the fact that you can record on your schedule. All right, when you have to find a studio and rent time, there's that pressure of, oh man, I got to make sure that I do my audiobook in, in you know, this amount of time. And if you're having a bad day or it's not coming out the way that you want it to, your time's up, right? The time's up, they boot you out, they get the next client in. And that's, a, that, that's just horrible pressure that you don't want to be putting on yourself. So when you set up your own recording space, that's the way to go. All right. The next phase, of course, is learning how to do a narration. And we really dive deep into what it takes to not just be average, but to be awesome, to do a great narration. And you can do it. And I share with you a bunch of tools and techniques. And again, I'm there with you every step of the way as your coach to make sure that you're doing an awesome narration. Okay. As you're recording your audiobook, you're sending me the files. And with my audio uh, editing experience, that's what I bring to the table. You get coaching, you get editing. So you send your files, I clean them up, make sure they sound great. And as I mentioned earlier, making sure that they meet the exact specifications for publication, okay? So you won't get rejected. Your files will sound great. Your audiobook will be perfect. Audible will love you, all right? So will your listeners. And then the other part of the program is that I'll do the uploading of your audio files to Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books for you. So you don't even have to worry about it. So the only thing that you have to worry about is just doing a great narration. And that's it. Again, if you want more information about the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program that I teach, just go to the website at robertlanecoaching.com. All right. All the information is there. Book your call. All right. And with that, my friends, we're going to wrap things up here on the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. My assignment to you is this. When you're out and about in the world, smile at a stranger, say hello to them, maybe give them a compliment because that small gesture of kindness can make the world a difference in somebody's life. So go out there, my friends, be good humans and join us next week on another edition of the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. RobertLaneCoaching.com is where you go for more information. We're streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. I appreciate you hanging out. We'll be talking to you next week, my friends. Take care. 
This has been Your Book, Your Voice with host Robert A. Lane. Tune in each week for another powerful and informative episode of Your Book, Your Voice. Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave TV Network.